we're having our own side conversation here. Uh, welcome back to the desk. We, I'm excited. Uh, we don't get many female guests, but when we do, we bring the best. Uh, Layla Ali is here, ladies and gentlemen. And from my understanding, you're just doing our show today, which is an honor. Yes. Okay. We're very happy to be here. Okay, God, we're so and happy. We're to happy you. to have you. Mm. <laughs> All right. Well, let's just get right to it, shall we, Mr. Bayless? I don't know why everyone's laughing. It's just a lot I'm of smiles. <laughs> very giddy. Um, How about having a good time? We're having a good time. So, listen. Obviously, many consider your father the greatest oh, yeah. of all time. That, there's no question about that. Well, who, so, who doesn't? Uh, who doesn't? Thank you. There could I'm be sure some. Be there could there. be some, yes. but they're ridiculous. Oh. But let's talk about the state of boxing right now. Is there anyone out there that compares to your father? Oh my God. When I think of my father, I think of so much more than boxing, but I think just in the ring, no, not even just in the ring. I mean, my father brought so much charisma to the sport, you know, aside from his talent and his skills and, you know, just what he brought to the heavyweight division alone. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you look at heavyweights now, sure. there's no one close to Muhammad Ali. And even the guys who are technically great, they're still, I don't put them on the level of my father. You know, I often wonder, as you see guys, the Floyd Mayweather Juniors of the world and others, and you see the way they are, how they conduct themselves in terms of trying to market themselves in the sport of boxing, it seems to be successful. Do you believe in any way that, number one, they try to, they, that they emulate your father? Um, and, if, and, and if not, do you think they really, really try to do that, that your father was sort of the... Uh, you know, the motivational person behind the kind of behavior that you see some of these guys doing in boxing? I think that, you know, my father, the success that he had promoting himself, I mean, it would be crazy not to look at that, yeah. you know, as a blueprint and say, hmm, you know, this, he, he was onto something here and try to do it. I mean, nobody can do it quite like he did. Um, you know, I, I run into people now all the time. They're just like, oh, they're from other countries. We used to wake up at three in the morning and watch your father. Wow. So people who are big here and, you know, people respect them in the, in the ring here, they don't give people the excitement that my father gave people. He's a global mm -hmm. icon outside of boxing. So you can try, but, you know, it, it, it's not that easy to do. And my father wasn't only great in the ring. People loved who he was as a person. So it was like full circle. Mm -hmm. So it's one thing just to run your mouth and try to promote a fight. But what my father did, you know, for the world, yep. you know, not just boxing, it was just on a whole nother level. Could you just briefly put back into perspective what your father did have to go to to become that global icon? And I'm talking about the early days for our younger viewers who might not mm. really have a feel for this. To go from Cassius Clay to changing to Muhammad Ali to, to, to survive being a conscientious objector saying, no, I, I, I have no beef with those Viet Cong. I'm not going to go fight for this country. And all that he went through, mm. could you just put it in some perspective? I can. You know, there's so much that I could say because there's mm. so much history there. And like you said, people don't know the history. Mm. Why is he loved so much? It goes way far beyond the ring. And I think that um, the main thing that people love about my father is the fact that he's his own man. He stood up for what he believed in. He didn't have a posse around him. You know, he wasn't worried about people taking his titles, yeah. his money. You know, he wasn't in fear of his life. You know, he just wanted to do what was right. And some, a lot of people didn't love him, mm. you know, or they didn't agree with him. But one thing we all have to do is respect that, you know, because most people aren't going to do it, especially if you have something to take away from them and you know my father ever since he was young he said I'm beautiful I'm the greatest and you know you may not know it now but I'm gonna show you and he backed it up and you know we can call ourselves the best or the greatest but the whole world right. calls my father the greatest you know and and like you said it's because of everything that he went through mm -hmm. and stood up for what he believed in and how much got taken away from him and then he still came back and fought fought for the people loves people and he's been super consistent with that even now you know he said when he first started boxing that boxing was just the platform you know winning the titles and having the gold watches or the rolls royce is just going to get people to listen to you because right. unfortunately that's what people money empowers everything mm -hmm. to people and then he was going to be able to to spread his message and that's what he's done and he's still doing his humanitarian work now through the Ali Center and just going out in public even with the sickness and his disease you know where a lot of people feel bad for him but he doesn't you know he's how is his health now? he's good I mean he has Parkinson's disease and it, it's uh, progressive and you know it's hard for people to watch because we remember him talking and moving and doing all things he wanted to do but it just reminds you that you know God is in charge mm. you know and at the end of the day it doesn't matter nothing else matters but what you have inside you know in your spirit and he still has that spirit there mm. What does your father think about the state of boxing today? I don't know. 
You mm. know, I, I can't really answer that question because I haven't had that conversation with him. But um, knowing my father, <laughs> mm. <laughs> you know, I, I don't think that he'd be too impressed. Mm. Because I'm wondering, the game itself, I mean, even back in the day, you know, when you hear so many stories being told or what have you, even back then, promoters had some influence, but it seems like never as much as they do today. I mean, back in the day, whether it was Ali against Foreman, Frazier, Ken Norton, Mike, I mean, it, the list goes on and on. You, you, you had to, you, you ultimately had to get into the ring and fight, mm -hmm. whereas today... You don't necessarily have to do that, and the promoters are in the way more than ever before. Exactly. I, I'm, I'm wondering if that's something that he's ever talked about at all at any time. Mm -mm. Yeah. No, I've never talked to him about that. And um, like you said, you know, back in the day, the best fought the best, yeah. and uh, multiple times if they had to. And it wasn't. Yeah. Of course, you want the money, but you want the bragging rights, and you just want to show. That's what a real fighter. You know, what it comes down to is like, you know, get in there and you're going to be challenged because, I mean, I had that problem in my career, as you know, we've talked about over and over again, that, you know, I love to fight. I was good at what I did. A, a lot of the girls in my weight class just weren't anywhere near as talented as, as I was. So I would have to get in the ring and fight girls that I knew were, weren't going to yeah. be challenged. Right. And then there were certain girls I wanted to fight. They wouldn't get into the ring with me, but they're going around saying I won't fight them. Mm. But I'm like my father in the sense that, you know, Knock me out, and I'm going to say, you the woman, can I have a rematch? Yep. That's it. I'm yep. not going to run from you because, I mean, what's that going to do? I want to be able to go home and sleep at night. You know, to be able to call yourself the best, you have to beat the best. So, um, Well, speaking of that, and this kind of leads us to a debate we often have on this show. I want to get your take on Manny Pacquiao and Mayweather. Was one scared of the other? I don't think so. Um, Look at that. Look that way when you say that. Look that way when you say that. I don't think so. Uh, Keep going. Just, just, <laughs> I, I'm coming from a fighter's perspective. Okay. Okay. Knowing, knowing, you know, I don't know both of them well, but I know both of them. They both have talent. They both brought, you know, what they had to the ring. And it's just that sometimes there's so much going on in the background, yeah. you know, with the promoters and the money and all this, all this. Like Mayweather is so talented that, you know, a lot of people would look at M Manny and say, oh, he has the power to beat Mayweather, but Mayweather knows how to get around certain things just with his skills, mm -hmm. you know, and I just don't see him being afraid of Pacquiao and vice versa. So, you know, I, I, it's, it's still annoying because, you know, these guys let their egos get to their head. Right. And, you know, 30 million or 40 million doesn't matter. At the I end mean, of the day. On. At the yeah. end of the day, just get in the ring and let's make it happen. So it really comes down to what type of man you are, you know, and I think that it does at some point have something to do with the fighters and the decisions that they're making, but not necessarily being afraid. So I don't think it's fear. You don't feel that be, Mayweather was more afraid no. of Pacquiao? You don't think? Okay. So I just don't that's, that. that's been his stance so the entire time. He's so disrespectful. <laughs> I've seen him. Okay. I've seen all of Let you. Explain, <laughs> explain yourself. Go ahead, explain. <sighs> the thing I despise about today's boxing is that I did have the privilege of covering a number of your father's fights. They were heavyweight fights, as you well know. It was all about the heavyweight division, and it was a parade of stars. Mm -hmm. Obviously, every time your father fought through his prime, it was against somebody who was really credible, somebody who posed a real threat to him. That has dried up. Is, is there much left in the heavyweight division that you're really interested in? No. Because we're talking about Pacquiao and Mayweather. These are the little guys now. These right. are the little, right? But I mean, you also got to remember okay. when you got Vitaly or, or Vitaly rather yeah. or Vladimir Klitschko yeah. and they outweigh their opposition okay. by 50 pounds, that okay. will help you lose interest too. Okay, but here's the problem. For some reason, we could go deep into why this is. The, the kids of the last couple of generations said, no, I'm, I'm not going to box. Maybe they looked at your father and they said, ooh, maybe, that I, maybe that's what happened to him. Mm -hmm. And they said, ah, I think I'll play foot. I'd rather play football or basketball or whatever, baseball, whatever else they, they chose. And all of a sudden, it put Floyd in a more and more commanding position where when he fights now, he can just sort of name his figure. Off one fight, he, he can... Be, he could be set for life on any given night. He makes a minimum of 40 million bucks. It's just right staggering. Think about that. 40 million so bucks? Yeah. Okay. So to me, he looked at Manny Pacquiao, and I'm going back five years now, when Pacquiao was Pacquiao. And we're, I think we're going to do this topic here yeah, in a second. But he's had a, a big spiritual conversion, and he became a politician. He's, he's in a, a second term now in political office. So back in the day... When, when he was a zealot in boxing, mm -hmm. when, when he was a terror, I think Floyd looked at him as, wow, he's as quick as I am, 
and he punches he, m much stronger than I do. Floyd's just not a puncher. You, you admit that. He's not a knockout artist. He's a defensive fighter who has great skills. I've well, never doubted I, I the great skills. I think has proven that he can be had, though. You know, what I, mean? <laughs> okay. I mean, he did Okay, just but I just up. said five years ago when Manny was at his peak, when it was time for them to fight, Floyd is saying, right. no, why, do I, why would I subject myself? Why, why would I risk that? I want to hear from her. Well, at the end of the day, everyone can have their opinion, mm -hmm. you know, so, and that's fine. You know, that's fine for mm -hmm. you to feel that way as far as I'm concerned because nobody really knows except those two men. Right, right. But at the end of the day, I feel like part of the reason that, you know, Pacquiao did get knocked out and that does have an effect on you in, in the wars and things like that. Mm -hmm. So, no, he, that might not have happened to him when they were talking about mm -hmm. fighting each other. But, you know, you never know what it would have happened if him and Floyd would have fought. You yeah. know, Floyd isn't a knockout artist, you know. You know, he, he gets people with his speed, you know, and just being slick and you don't see punches coming. But, you know, everybody, it doesn't matter. The, 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 the point is to win the fight. And, you know, <laughs> we all have different routes of getting there. At the end of the I mean? day. So, yeah. just because Macquia Pacquiao punches harder than Floyd, that I wouldn't take anything away from him. Nobody but punches. if you can't hit, if you can't land that shot, it doesn't That's matter. Right. And if you can't land it, if somebody moves just a little bit and you land it, but you don't land it as hard, you know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to make a difference. Hands so. can't hit what your eyes can't see. Oh, okay. Just a reminder. Uh, I could say that for Floyd versus Pacquiao. Okay, so he brought up uh, Pacquiao and Bradley. They're having a rematch, obviously. Mm -hmm. You know he lost to Bradley. Mm -hmm. um, and so, actually, Joel Diaz, which is Bradley's trainer, essentially said, he had this really uh, this quote that was pretty interesting, and we can put it up, but he essentially said, I think this is Manny Pacquiao's last fight. Uh, he's trained people towards the end of their career, and he could tell that this is basically the end of his career. He has too much wear and tear on his body, and he has too much compassion for his opponents. So, your thought on this, is this Pacquiao's last fight? Is well, that the end of his career? Who would know? I mean, you know, people always have speculation, you know, um, that's something that Pacquiao might not even know right now. You know, you do have to take it fight by fight, and that happens to all fighters when they get to a certain age. They've had some wars, they've been knocked out. People start, you know, talking about whether or not it's going to be their last fight or whether it needs to be, but that's really up to him. What I would be doing as the fighter and the trainer is focusing on that he's going to be in the ring, and obviously, I didn't actually see that fight, but I know that, you know, it was a controversial decision. So, mm -hmm. you know, he must have been doing something. And he's about to get back in there again, so you know right. you, you better get past right. this fight and then worry about that later. Let me and let me ask you this because see, I I I never saw you lose, Layla. I mean, you you are accustomed to winning, mm. uh, but but Manny Pacquiao, he didn't get look look. Oh boy, he, he there was it, it wasn't really a technical. Now, I mean, this boy was put to sleep. You understand? I'm talking about snoring type of that. That's how gone he was. He was up in okay, five up seconds. Whatever, he was whatever. In five, five seconds. seconds. Playing he was playing checkers around or and chess? Listen, chess. Listen, oh, that chess. One. Okay. All I'm saying to you is this: <laughs> Bernard Hopkins and others have been on the record saying how you go down when you go down like that. It's so devastating that it might take you 10 fights to recover mm. from that because it's such a devastating way to go out. It wasn't like a technical knockout where you got up, you were a little wobbly, you lost your senses for a few seconds. You were asleep. You know, yeah. your family was at ringside crying. Right. I mean, you, the, the promoter had to hold them and back. And it does something to your head. That's right. I mean, literally. I mean, you're getting hit in the head. So people really, sometimes people are never the same after that. I'm mm. not talking about just the emotional side of yeah. it. You know, um, especially when you're used to being a winner. Yes. You know, and uh, people, I've seen people just never come back. I mean, look what happened with George Foreman when my dad beat him. That's right. Because yep. everyone around him, like, you're so big, you're so bad. And then the way he went down, you know, it was, it was very embarrassing the way he got beat. Yeah, yeah it, it, it was, wasn't was one blow that did it. It was to, yeah. his, to his psyche. It yes. was like, he, he exactly. was just wrecked. He yes. lost all his confidence. Exactly. He did bounce back. Much and then and then he came back a yeah. much nicer guy. Right, he did. Yeah, went away he for some years. And he's a whole different person. Mm. You know, and I've seen that happen. Uh, you know, I'm never going to compare myself to these people, but I've seen it even happen with some of the girls that I fought. Mm -hmm. You know, um, because I was the pretty girl. I was just Muhammad Ali's daughter. She can't punch. She can't right. nothing. They listen to all that hype. Right. And they get in there and get whooped. <laughs> <laughs> and they have to deal with me and me being in their face and saying what I'm saying to them and then they can't right. do anything about it and then they have to go back and regroup and figure things and figure life out. Mm -hmm. You know, so like I yeah. said, be what it may. All right. Who's the best fighter in the world right now? Say it. Uh-oh. Who's the best fighter in the world, Layla Ali? I would have to say Floyd. That's all I want. Wait, is he still fighting? He is, he is still fighting. He is? Yeah. Oh, I, I thought just wanted he was to make sure. in the world right now today. I just wanted to make sure you knew. Yes. Just Ladies to make and gentlemen, sure. Layla Ali, she's uh, going to take a break off, and then you'll be back a little later on in the okay. show. It's a pleasure. I'm Thank so happy you. you're Thank here. You. Thank you. Guess who we got coming?